The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and sent into our hearts the spirit of your Son. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that all people may know the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Would you please be seated for the proclamation of God's word. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has honed her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her animals. She has mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servant girls. She calls from the highest places in the town. You that are simple, turn in here. To those without sense, she says, come, eat of my bread and drink of the wine I have mixed. Lay aside immaturity and live and walk in the way of insight. The word of the Lord. As main seated. We sing together Psalm 34, verses 9 to 14. Oh, fear the Lord, you ones. For those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Which of you desires life 
and covets many days to enjoy good. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God and the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing together our gradual hymn, number 69, We Who Live by Sound and Symbol. Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to the people, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in me, in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, 
So whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you. May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please be seated? Well, what a delight it is for me to join with the 12 churches of the Toronto East Deanery this morning. I am here at St. Barnabas Church on the Danforth. But 11 other churches of the deanery have been invited to join us by live feed. So welcome the folks from the Church of St. Aidan in the Beach, the Church of St. Bede, St. Nicholas Birch Cliff, St. John the Baptist Norway, St. Monica, the Church of St. Saviour, St. Matthew First Avenue, St. Luke East York, St. David Donlins, St. Andrew's Japanese Congregation, and the Church of the Resurrection on Woodbine Avenue. I hope I didn't miss anyone. We are the Anglican parishes of the east end of the city, and we are worshiping together by way of a virtual community this morning. And I want to thank the Reverend Jeanette Lewis and the Reverend Tay Moss for coming up with this idea and putting together all the necessary pieces to make this happen today. When I told a friend of mine what we were doing today and how on just one Sunday, I could visit an entire deanery of churches in my Episcopal area. He noted that if this is a success, I might be able to reduce my Sunday workload to about five Episcopal visits a year. <laughs> Not sure it's going to work that way. I want to begin my homily today by acknowledging the tragedy that took place just outside this building four weeks ago today. On that warm Sunday evening when thousands of people were strolling down the Danforth, finishing up dinner, having ice cream, walking the dog, a man pulled out a gun and began to shoot. At the end of that nightmare, three people lay dead, including the shooter, and many more were injured. I want to commend the people of this parish and this community and the other churches in our deanery who reached out with love and compassion that week and in the weeks that have followed, who reminded this neighborhood that the love and peace of Christ make a difference in the world, especially in times of despair. When tragedy strikes, the Church of Jesus Christ is there. You are there, which is exactly where we are called to be. As we gather in this virtual community today, the Gospel reading brings us the image of Jesus as the living bread from heaven. And Jesus makes it abundantly clear, even uncomfortably clear, that this bread, which he gives for the world to eat, is his own flesh. Now, perhaps not surprisingly, this language provokes a strong reaction from those who hear him. How can this man give us his flesh to eat, they ask. And Jesus' very own disciples, those who know him best, react in a similar way. In the verses immediately after today's text, if we were to read on in chapter 6 of John's Gospel, his disciples would say to Jesus, This teaching is difficult. Who can accept it? Well, is it any wonder that they found this teaching difficult? Those who were following Jesus were growing in faith and in intimacy with him. Just before this conversation takes place that we hear today, earlier in chapter 6 of John's Gospel, Jesus had been doing great and glorious things. He had fed 5,000 people on a hillside. Then he walked on water. Why now was he holding out for them this rather gruesome image of feeding them, not with loaves and fishes, but with his own flesh and blood? 
We imagine that the crowd that day didn't want to hear any more of that gruesome talk. The American preacher, the Reverend Martin Copenhaver, tells the story of a congregation he once served in the U.S. On one particular Sunday, the altar was draped, as always, with starched linen, and at the offertory procession, it was set with silver chalices and patens and beautiful glass cruets. The congregation that day was silent, even somber, as Copenhaver began to read the familiar words of institution in a solemn tone that was meant to add dignity to the proceedings. He writes, when I began to repeat Jesus' familiar words, this is my body broken for you, this is my blood shed for you, a small girl near the front of the church suddenly in a loud voice said, ooh, yuck. The congregation looked horrified, Copenhaver continued, as if someone had splattered blood all over the altar, which, in effect, is just what that little girl had done with her exclamation. Our own revulsion with this language and imagery of eating flesh and drinking blood is an echo of the discomfort expressed by the earliest disciples, and I think is grounded in our own creatureliness. That is, each one of us needs food and drink to survive. It is the most basic human need. We consume food so that it satisfies our hunger and gives us life. Without it, we are dead. But we also know that what we eat is digested in our bodies and then literally becomes part of us. You are what you eat. So could it be that by using this image of food, Jesus is inviting us into the most intimate kind of relationship imaginable? Could it be that the intimacy is so intense that it actually makes us uncomfortable because it is this close, it is inside of us? If so, what better way to convey Christ's desire for absolute oneness with us than to meet us here in the Holy Eucharist. Across the centuries and in various traditions, this act of gathering around a table like this has become the primary act by which we have been invited into the deepest form of communion with Christ. It's called different things in different places, the Eucharist, Holy Communion, the Mass, the Lord's Supper, and it has taken on somewhat different understandings, as we know. For hundreds of years, the Roman Catholic Church has articulated a belief in transubstantiation, that is, the conversion of the whole substance of bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. During the Reformation, some Protestants reacted against this, arguing that the bread and wine of the table were merely symbols of Christ's body and blood, and were nothing more. Well, not surprisingly, Anglicans found a via media, a middle way, which emphasizes real presence. The belief that the actual presence of Christ is in the sacrament of the Eucharist, though how that happens is a sacred mystery. Regardless, for the Christian Church, this holy meal is the primary way in which the crucified and risen Christ becomes known to us and feeds us for our common life together. In the Eucharist, we receive the bread that gives us life in the world and raises us up in the next. The Eucharist is a foretaste of the heavenly banquet that has been prepared for us. But you know, I think there's something even more here in this text. Look at what Jesus says. He says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. This bread is not only to help remember who Jesus was and what he did for us on the cross. This is living bread, food for the journey. It is for life eternal beginning today. It is not like that bread which our ancestors ate way back then and they died. Rather, this is the meal in which God in Christ 
promises to be one with us and for us forever, to stick with us and even in us no matter what. And oh my, there is an abundance of blessing in this meal. One of our favorite grocery stores is in Scarborough, up near Kennedy and Warden. And in the center of the store is a room with floor-to-ceiling glass walls so that everyone can see what's going on inside. And what's going on inside is bread making, pita bread making, in fact. It gets formed into little lumps by the baker, and then it travels across a conveyor belt and into the oven, and then it comes out the other side of the oven and travels up another conveyor belt and around the room to be cooled, and then it lands softly in a pile to be bagged. And this just keeps going and going and never seems to stop. I sometimes have this vision that the person responsible for bagging the bread just walks away, but the machine keeps making bread until everyone in the store is buried in a giant mountain of pita bread. That, I believe, is like the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more, the old hymn says. Feed me till I want no more. But of course, the Eucharist is not our private meal, merely for our own satisfaction. It's not enough for us to be fed till I want no more, or fed until you want no more. If Jesus is the bread that came down from heaven to give life to the world, then the Eucharist is for the world. Those of us who are tuning in to this morning are from a deanery that is about 50 square kilometers. It's about seven kilometers long from the river over to Warden Avenue and about seven kilometers deep from the lake up to Thorncliffe Park. That's it. Just this little postage stamp of God's great vineyard. But when we gather around this table each week, when we join our prayers and praises and thanksgivings with Christians not only across this deanery, not only in the Diocese of Toronto, but those throughout the world who are being fed at tables just like this one, we are in communion with one another. And we are gathered with another number, that great number who have passed from this life and now stand at the great banquet table of the kingdom of heaven. This meal that we celebrate once again today binds us together with them and with one another and with Jesus Christ. It is the food that unites us all for the work of the kingdom of God. It's that big. So, the presence of Jesus in this Eucharist should prompt us to look up and to look out, asking questions like this. Who is not here? at this feast today? And how is it that God is trying to feed not only us, but also the world? How is it that we live with such plenteousness, but so many go without? The Eucharist also begs the question, how are we feeding the world with the saving love of Christ? How do we proclaim by word and action the good news of his love, so that the intimacy that we know might also be known by others. In a few moments, this live feed is going to come to an end for most of you. Those of you who are, who are tuning in from across the deanery, I gather we are also being joined by Christians as far away as England and Singapore. And in a few moments, those who are watching will gather around your own altars to be fed with the bread of heaven. As you leave that holy table today, remember the bread and wine, which is Christ's body and blood, is in you and will nourish you to do amazing things for God. If only you will enter into the communion which Christ desires with you and with his church. 
For the promise of Jesus is that those who eat his flesh and drink his blood abide in him, and he abides in them, and they will be raised up on the last day. In this Eucharist, Christ dwells in you. May we be filled with the fullness of Christ at this table today, and so strengthened by this holy food and drink that we may go forth into the world to love and to serve. Thanks be to God. Amen. Wherever you are, will you please stand with us as we confess the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As a parent setting food before their hungry children, God satisf satisfies our most basic needs and our deepest longings. Confident that we have a concerned and caring God, we now pray for our church and the world. The response to, in faith we pray to you, O God, is, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord, we bring before you all Christians, especially church leaders and pastors. May they remain faithful in times of trial, trusting in your everlasting love. May all who take risks to witness be given courage and inspiration. We lift up to you Archbishop Colin, Bishop Kevin, Reverend Jeanette, Father David, and Deacon Grace, that they may continue to be faithful witnesses to your mercy and love. In faith we pray to you, O God. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we bring before you all the diverse societies of our world, May your living spirit be spread to purify what is corrupt, inspire the aesthetic, and unlock the hearts of all who are bigoted. We pray that our world may not continue in ignorance, but discern what is truly good and just. In faith, we pray to you, O God. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Father, we have a tendency to be competitive and unconcerned about one another. We pray for all political leaders that they would be led and guided by your wisdom in the ways of justice and peace. In faith, we pray to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. Lord, we lift up to you all the poor and hungry people in our world. We ask that we may be generous in giving, compassionate in serving, and sensitive in understanding the needs of others. We pray for your mercy on all who have been afflicted affected by the wildfires and also the tragic bridge collapse in Italy. In faith, we pray to you, O oh God. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, there's a lot of mistrust and skepticism in our world. Help us as believers to be faithful witnesses to you who does indeed have a plan for our world. 
In faith we pray to you, O God. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray, Lord, for our own families and friends. Help and guide us as we try to follow you. We ask your protection and guidance over us as we go about our daily lives. In faith we pray to you, O God. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, we bring before you the weak, the frightened, and all who are suffering in any way, especially those known to us, either aloud or silently in our hearts. Let them feel a strong sense of your presence with them. In faith, we pray to you, O God. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, we lift up before you all who have died in faith, especially Emma, Esma Braithwaite and any others known to us. May they all know the joy and peace of your heaven forever. In faith, we pray to you, O God. Lord, Lord hear Lord, our prayer. Lord. O loving God, the source of all good gifts, we praise and thank you for your provident care. Hear the prayers we have made in faith. As a gracious and loving God, feed us with the bread of life so that we may abide with you forever. We make these prayers as always through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share a sign of that peace with one another. Peace.
Our offertory hymn is number 70, Jesu, Thou Joy of Loving Hearts. Loving God and Father, you have adopted us to be your heirs. Accept all we offer you this day, and give us grace to live as faithful children. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks and praise, Almighty God, for the gift of a world full of wonder and for our life which comes from you. By your power, you sustain the universe. Glory to you forever and ever. You created us to love you with all our heart and to love each other as ourselves, but we rebel against you by the evil that we do. In Jesus, your Son, you bring healing to our world and gather us into one great family. Therefore, with all who serve you on earth and in heaven, we praise your wonderful name as we sing.
We give you thanks and praise, loving Father, because in sending Jesus, your Son, to us, you showed us how much you love us. He cares for the poor and the hungry. He suffers with the sick and the rejected. Betrayed and forsaken, he did not strike back, but overcame hatred with love. On the cross, he defeated the power of sin and death. By raising him from the dead, you show us the power of your love to bring new life to all your people. Glory to you forever and ever. On the night before he gave up his life for us, Jesus, at supper with his friends, took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which is given for you. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which is shed for you and for many, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Gracious God, with this bread and wine, we celebrate the death and resurrection of Jesus, and we offer ourselves to you in him. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may know the presence of Jesus in the breaking of bread, and share in the life of the family of your children. Glory to you forever and ever. Father, you call us to be your servants. Fill us with the courage and love of Jesus, that all the world may gather in joy at the table of your kingdom. We sing your praise, Almighty Father, through Jesus our Lord, in the power of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Creator of all, you gave us golden fields of wheat, whose many grains we have gathered and made into this one bread. So may your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
As you are able, would you please stand? Eternal God, we have received a token of your promise. May we who have been nourished by holy things live as faithful heirs of your promised kingdom. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the Church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. Would you please be seated for some announcements? and thank you all for coming today. I hope you enjoyed the service and a big thank you to the bishop for being a big part of today. Uh, don't forget to read your bulletin and take a look at what's coming up. We have the art show advertised, we have the outreach conference, and we still have two Sundays left to bring stuff for Kennedy House, the youth shelter that we support. If I uh, take a look at the items there and uh, see uh, what you could supply for us, and the boxes are at the back. Um, I'm sure all of you are aware that Esma passed away this past week. Uh, I have no details yet of the funeral. Uh, as soon as I do, I'll phone a few strategic people and we'll get the word around. But Esma was in charge of our readers, so we need to make sure that um, people know that there is a sheet at the back of the church, and if you can read for us, on a Sunday, they're usually a month at a time at the back, if you'd please sign up and it gives you the readings. And uh, we can get it for you in large print if you need it, if we know ahead of time. So please make sure you sign up to read and do that ministry. And if anybody would like to take over doing that ministry, that would be wonderful as well. Uh, I think that's it for the announcements. So our closing hymn is number 468, 468.
Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.